Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the stand up meeting for the 3rd of May 2022 from Open Research Institute for FPGA projects. So what we're going to talk about is what we did over the past week, what we have planned for the next week, if we need any resources, and um, if we have any roadblocks. Uh, and I have some reports from Leonard. Uh, he can't be here because of a, a conflicting meeting. Um, but he's uh, really happy about the progress and is uh, looking forward to the receiver design. So we've been uh, starting to talk about FPGA re receiver designs and also about whether or how, how to integrate um, lockstep mode for space. And what this does is it has uh, yeah, multiple uh, decisions or multiple executions in parallel. This is a pretty standard way of dealing with uh, difficult environments. So he's he started asking some questions uh, and the dev, dev boards that we have and the parts that we target support this lockstep mode. Uh, also, Paul, he is uh, has another appointment today, uh, but reports no issues with uh, remote labs. We did have some some weird stuff happen with uh, logging into the logging into the virtual machines, but it turned out to be uh, the problem was between the chair and the keyboard uh, from the people that wanted to access it. So, so everything seems to be going well in Remote Lab West. So I'm going to pass it over to Everest. You have the floor. Um, OK. Uh, sorry. Maybe the audio is not good. OK. Um, I just uh, I didn't uh, done any progress as uh, last week I uh, mainly paragliding um, and uh, just before that I spoke with Shoto about uh, some issue about uh, changing uh, constellation uh, and the plan is to uh, make a firmware with a software to uh, basic test software uh, and like that it could uh, help him to uh, uh, to better debug the the latest uh, issue that's it for me <laughs> yes thank you that's actually a lot um, for, for those of you that, uh, that may not know, then being able to have some agility or to be able to change modulation and coding on the fly is uh, at the heart of what we want to accomplish because we want to be able to have adaptive coding and modulation. So um, things that support being able to change the constellation easily without it uh, triggering lots of errors or, or being able to do it efficiently um, is, is greatly valued and appreciated. Uh, so that sounds like plenty. Excellent. All right, James, you have the floor. Greetings, everyone. I'm James, Kilo Juliet 7 Kilo Delta Echo. I'm an intern at ORI working at Remote Lab South. Currently, not too much to report from Remote Lab South. Things have been going well here. We haven't had as many storm issues that have been directly impacting the lab. So everything's been going fairly well here. So pretty much all clear on our end. OK, thanks so much. Uh, and for those that don't know, we still have to build out uh, the lab, and that is moving forward with some uh, budgeting plans, um, a good contact with a contractor, things like that. Uh, then this same sort of effort is going on with the M17 lab in the eastern part of the United States. Uh, so we're, we're building and, um, and looking forward to, to a lot of success there. Is there anything, James, is there anything that you need? Uh, I know that I owe you all some, some information about uh, floor planning and stuff like that, but is there anything else that you need this week? Uh, nothing in particular. We, we just need that information on floor plan and we're still getting our budget together for the facility we're gonna have, but otherwise uh, there's nothing in particular we need. Cool, okay, thanks so much. Okay, so what do you have the floor? Um, so this past week I did some um, sort of like small changes in the DVBFPGA stuff. Um, is uh, the the way the test ran before 
it was random, but always using the same seed. Um, so I just yeah made the test to use different seeds, um, like random seeds every time. Like, like you can pass the same seed, suppose a seed failed. Um, just uh, sort of a minor improvement. Um, I'm I'm also trying to um, bring back the the the, the FPJ card I have here um like some of the interfaces changed so uh, yeah i'm just fixing the block design and yeah we'll get to that in I, I think later this week i can get to that yeah excellent all right and any uh any roadblocks or, or resources that you need uh no no not really okay thank you so much that's an awful lot of work um I know when you, anytime you say there's small changes in an FPGA, it's sometimes not <laughs> small. <laughs> what we're doing is definitely not easy, but it's well worth it. Um, yeah, so so uh, for, for my end, uh, today and tomorrow, I have a, I'll present um, a F, uh, work up from uh, M17 uh, about the forward error correction uh, and about the project, about ORI and about the work that we do and introducing, um, you know, the concepts of, why do we do things like DVBS2 and S2X and to show, you know, how close it is to uh, the physical limits of, of communications theory, you know, so, so that's a, a big outreach effort this week. And then I'll also present to San Bernardino microwave group, which is, which is always good. So we'll give an update there. It's a very active DVBS2 and S2X involved group. Uh, that'll be on May 6th. So today, tomorrow, and May 6th are presentations. Um, I'm taking off May 7th, and then I'll be back. And the next presentation we'll have will be DEF CON. So what I'd like to do uh, as soon as possible is to start pulling together um, a package or, or build or um, we need to start putting together a platform that will allow us to uh, to go on the road to Las Vegas or wherever else uh, people want to show um, and get it working over the air. So I'll be asking lots of dumb questions on like, okay, if I need to start from the repository, how do I set it up on a, a reasonable system? Um, and we'll, we'll also have a lot of companion work from the uplink from M17. Uh, so that's that's something that out of, the, out of this week, uh, over the next week, we'll, will be able to produce. Uh, it would be really nice to be able to, to merge these two things, all the uplink work uh, from M17 and the, the downlink work uh, that we're doing now. Uh, and also, uh, like I said, with, the, with Leonard, uh, starting to look at the receiver and uh, what we need to do for receiver design. So lots of stuff coming, coming up. Uh, so, so be prepared for being asked. Um, you know, questions uh, and, and I, I'll, I can commit to to putting the uh, you know how to and the documentation for how to get it working um, for a demo um, so I'll help with that anyway that's the that's the plan um, that's the report from this end all right any other questions or comments before we close Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, so, so please be looking for some some additional videos this week from presentations for the uplink, and questions for for how to package everything up for uh, demonstrations um, out there in the world. I know that we also have a chance to present at Friedrichshafen uh, for a couple of different projects. That's deeply appreciated because it's a very very important event, probably the most advanced SDR amateur radio event in the world. All right, everybody. See you soon. See you on Slack. So yeah, thank you. You bet. Thank you.